Today we cancel a gentleman by the name of James Rose. Uh, sorry, I suppose I should refer to him as a gentleman rather than man because he identifies as a they, as multiple people. On his website, James says that he is a gender fluid actor living in New York City and also includes this note. James writes about gender liberation, eating disorders, um, trauma, sex, their feelings, and their exes on Instagram where they intend to leave the world a little better than they found it. Because, you know, there's no better way to improve the world than by talking about your feelings on Instagram. But James is not just a gender fluid actor and Instagram diarist. He's also a self-described gender educator. Now, you may have noticed that literally anyone can describe themselves as an educator these days, which is no surprise because literally anyone can describe themselves as literally anything these days. No labels have any meaning. Words are all empty in this utopia of ours. So shoot for the moon. I mean, speaking of which, I'm going to start describing myself as an astronaut. In fact, I'm a, I'm a gender astronaut. What does that mean? Well, it's up to me to decide. Your job is to listen and nod your head respectfully as if you know what the hell I'm even trying to say. That brings us back to James, who in his role as gender educator will often post TikTok videos lecturing cis women, as he calls them, about all of their many failures and foibles. Most recently, he posted a video explaining to women that they're not allowed to feel uncomfortable when penises are flying around in front of their faces in the locker room. Listen to him. A lot of cis women share this sentiment, and I do want to break it down. This may be uncomfortable to sit through and to listen to, and I think that's why it's important that we do this. Feeling like trans people are a threat to you in a space like a bathroom or a locker room is actually a version of internalized misogyny, which is not necessarily your fault because it's impossible to divorce our socialization from the prevalence of patriarchy, but it also does mean it's our responsibility to unlearn it for the safety of fellow women, especially trans women. In my experience as a gender educator, the majority of cis women who have experienced violence at the hands of men or just patriarchy or living in today's world, see anything that codes to them as remotely masculine, male, etc., and fear it, which in many ways is a survival tactic that makes sense. The difference is when we code trans people as the wrong gender, we're actually doing them way more a disservice than we are protecting ourselves because you're ostracizing and further alienating trans people. The false media narrative and trope around trans people is that we are predators that are tricking people into thinking that we're something that we're not, which is of course not true. Watch the documentary Disclosure on Netflix if you want more on that. So being uncomfortable with trans people in your space is something that you were taught and you can unlearn that. It's important to recognize that we can't tell someone's gender by their presentation, by their genitals, by the way that they look. All of that can be changed. All of that is arbitrary. None of that is central to your identity necessarily. You know, if the word mansplaining has any application at all, that would have, that would have to be it, I think. So let me translate. Here's what our friend James is saying to the ladies out there. He's saying, shut up, you stupid girls, and let him get naked in front of you. And people like this often get away with saying the most hideous things and being absolute tyrannical bullies and predators because, for one thing, they're in an, in an approved victim group, but also because of this grating, irritating, faux, compassionate tone they use. Now, any semi-aware person can recognize that this smug little bastard is being condescending and patronizing as hell and that he's doing it in an effort to emotionally blackmail women into allowing men to sexually harass them. But the dumber, non-aware people, a large demographic in this culture these days, unfortunately, will hear this and they'll say, well, he sounds like he's being nice. We should listen to whatever he says. The interesting thing is that James's message, which is often the message of, of trans activists, is that your feelings as a woman are not valid. He all but comes out and says that. Your feelings don't matter. You need to change your feelings. In fact, he knows more about your feelings than you do. He's conducted a therapeutic diagnosis of all the women in the country all at once, and he's decided that your discomfort with strange penis in a locker room is internalized misogyny. Did you get that? So if you as a woman do not want to see him as a male get naked in front of you, you are a misogynist. You are now essentially the man in that exchange, not him, and he is the victim of your misogyny. This is coercion of the most twisted kind, all in an effort to compel women to sit quietly while men expose themselves. If you feel like you aren't getting the respect you deserve in life, well, I've got a solution for you. Established titles is your opportunity to earn the title of Lord or Lady and gain the respect you deserve. All you need is a one square foot plot of land in Scotland. In your title pack, you'll receive at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate and an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate will include a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. These title packs are a fantastic gift and the best way to surprise your loved ones from girlfriends and boyfriends or even family. You could even get a couple pack for you and your partner where you can get adjoining plots of land 
Well, with this certificate, you could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on your credit card, your plane ticket, etc. Established Titles is having a great extended New Year's sale. So go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Matt Walsh to save 10% off today. And remember to use the discount code Matt Walsh or just click the link below. That's EstablishedTitles.com slash Matt Walsh or just click the link below. Louis C.K. was canceled with righteous fury by the mob when he exposed himself in front of women. Except that in his case, he asked for permission ahead of time. Doesn't make it okay, but he did. Still, it was argued that even with consent, there was implicit coercion because of the power that he had over the women in the interaction. Well, what about men who who, who do not ask for permission before exposing themselves and who apply explicit coercion to shame women into silence and acquiescence? By the standard already applied to many high-profile men in much much more ambiguous circumstances, these guys are, are sex predators. Now, the simplified view of our cultural ethos is that feelings are given first priority. Feelings matter above all else. I've often said this myself as recently as yesterday. And it's true, but the statement needs qualification. Because it's more accurate to say that some people's feelings matter above all else. If feelings in general were given pride of place, then James Rose would be roundly condemned by everybody for recording videos lecturing women about the illegitimacy of their feelings. He's allowed to do this because his feelings as a member of the LGBT camp are of utmost importance, primary importance. But the feelings of a woman, especially a white cisgender woman, quote unquote, don't necessarily rank at all. And when her feelings are made to contest with the feelings of the sacred alphabet people, her feelings are then ascribed a negative value. Her feelings aren't just unimportant. They're bad. They're shameful. They are a sin that must be punished, a disease that must be cured. See, if the left put an overemphasis on everybody's feelings, and they were obsessively concerned with making sure that nobody ever felt sad or uncomfortable, that would still be bad and dangerous in its own way, but at least we could call them well-intentioned. We could even say that their problem is an overabundance of compassion or a kind of misdirected, misappropriated compassion. Either way, they would be good people. They'd be nice people. A little bit too nice. Just misguided. That's not the case, though. Uh, on balance, it turns out that they care less about feelings than even I do. Because there's only a very select group of people whose feelings rank at all, and everybody else can go to hell, they say. Let's look at one more clip from James as he now responds to some of the comments taking issue with the video we just played. Listen to this. So you've caught me at the time when I'm not feeling diplomatic and I'm just going to yell. This is a horrible comment. And I don't need to defend any of my behavior, aka walking down the street as a freaking non-binary woman. But I'm gonna. Feeling uncomfortable with trans people walking down the street is just your transphobia. Because as a fellow femme, I understand the danger and the terror and the fear of walking around on the street, especially at night. I live in New York City. Don't even get me started. And because I'm aware of what it feels like to be on the receiving end of that as a femme and as a non-binary woman, when I see another potentially feminine presenting person in front of me, I will say things like coming behind on your left or just don't want to scare you coming behind on your right. Something that lets them know that I'm there so they don't feel fear. And I do this as a courtesy on the off chance they misgender me and think I'm a man. That's just camaraderie and looking out for each other. The fact that you feel like I would be unsafe on the street is literally just a coding for I don't conceptualize you as a non-binary person or as a woman. I don't need that energy on my page. Get out. So somehow we've gone from talking about locker rooms to uh, walking down the street. I'm not sure when that shift in the conversation happened, but even so, first of all, note how he, a male, identifies as a non-binary woman. Now, non-binary, if it means anything at all, which it doesn't, means that Someone is not a man or a woman, so he, a male, is also a woman, but also neither a man nor a woman, but also a man. And not only does he hold this incoherent jumble of self-identities in his confused head, but it also is your responsibility as a woman to know that just by looking at him as he passes by in the street. Now, James and his generosity, he will give you permission as a woman to be nervous when you're alone at night and a man walks by. He will allow that. So you should say thank you to James for that because he's going to let you have that feeling. Say thank you, Mr. James or Miss James or whatever. But if the man walking by identifies as a woman or if he identifies as a woman who identifies as neither a man nor a woman but is a man, then you must not feel nervous. You must intuit 
his self-perception in that moment. You must absorb it into your being in a split second. And if you don't, then you're a transphobe. This is the way the world works, according to this pompous, overbearing, megalomaniacal ass. You must conform to his version of the world. That's what you have to do. Or you can simply tell this person and every bullying narcissist like him to piss off. And also you can tell him that he is canceled. And that's what I would recommend. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.